it's hard to remember the moment that everything in our lives became plastic. In the 1960s, the word plastic conjured up notions of cheapness and vulgarity. And then we grew up and so did plastics. Today's plastics make most products lighter, stronger, cheaper, and in the case of electrical things, safer. Plastics can be made with almost any characteristics, hard, brittle, soft, transparent, opaque. As well, they can be made to melt and flow precisely to create almost any one-piece shape. Even though plastic manufacturing has become a big business, there's nothing to modern plastics that goes too far beyond high school chemistry. Aging hippies will be distressed to hear this, but plastic is organic. The front bumper of your car and the wheels on your baby buggy all trace their roots back to tiny plants and animals that died millions of years ago. The basic building blocks of plastics are hydrocarbons. The carbon atom has six electrons. Now, according to the chemistry you hated in high school, electrons will arrange themselves in bands according to the rules of two, eight, and eight. Since carbon only has six electrons, they arrange in bands of two and four. Now, it's important to note that the carbon atom is electrically balanced. It's got six protons in the nucleus and six electrons in orbit. The outermost orbit is called the atom's valence band. Carbon properly fills its first band with two electrons, but it only has four available to place in the next one. By the 288 rule of valence bands, it needs four more electrons. Now, carbon can't simply capture four more electrons because it's already electrically neutral. It can solve its tiny atomic conundrum by forming a so-called covalent bond with four hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen only has one electron, and by the rules of valency, this first shell should have two. So given a chance, hydrogen and carbon will happily hang around together in a pattern like this. This is the gas, methane. To go beyond methane will get graphically messy with all of these orbits and shared electrons. So we're going to switch to a more standard chemistry notation. Now, heat and pressure can be used to force the bonds open and make other hydrocarbons, all using covalent bonding to fill those outer valence bands. This one's octane. This is paraffin. You might know it as candle wax. Now, the pictures are getting smaller because the number of bonds is increasing. In real life, the atoms are the same size, but the characteristics of the material change. The methane molecule is small. It can wander around by itself, so it does. It exists as a gas at normal temperatures and pressures. Octane has more baggage, and it exists as a liquid. Paraffin, well, you get the picture. The characteristics of a substance tend to take on the properties of the arrangement of their molecules. Plastics are made from long, repeating chains of hydrocarbon molecules called polymers. Poly simply means many. Plastic is from an old Greek word meaning capable of being molded. Your basic plastic polymer is usually a long strand of bonded atoms that looks like a molecular plate of spaghetti. Depending on the exact bonding arrangement, the final polymer might be rigid, rubbery, or liquid. Plastics divide into two main groups, thermoset and thermoplastic. The thermosets are like cake batter. Once you transform them, they become rigid and they can't ever revert. Fiberglass resin is the most common thermoset. Most of the plastics that you have in your house and your driveway are thermoplastics. Thermoplastic can be softened to flow and cools back to rigidity. Some thermoplastics have long flowing structures with a broad melting range, like butter. Others have a crystalline structure, like ice, and a sharp melting point to match. Thermoplastics can be melted and remelted as often as you like without undergoing any change. The added heat temporarily loosens those bonds, allowing them to slip. A plastic car bumper can be shredded and remolded to make another one. So can a plastic bag and your watering can probably started life as a milk jug. Plastics that have been carefully created to match a specific part or product are known as engineering plastics. This is the General Electric Plastics Plant in Coburg, Ontario. Although GE makes various engineering plastics that find their way into compact discs, airplanes, cookware, cars, and tennis shoes, this plant specializes in ABS made from acrylonitrile, butadiene, and styrene. You probably met ABS pipe under the sink drain, but 
slight adjustments to its manufacture can create hundreds of varieties with carefully controlled characteristics. Raw materials are obtained from petroleum refiners and arrive at the plant by rail and tanker. By controlling the temperature, pressure, and time, molecules of plastic are carefully built to exact specifications. Polymers of ABS can be created that have specific melting points, structures, and strength. Plastic's also popular in manufacturing because its color is integral. Not only will the final product not require painting, but any dents or scratches will be the same color as the surface. Color is very important to most manufacturers. Here, a sample of car interior is being checked in the lab to ensure that it looks the same under various lighting conditions. Plastic travels through the plant through pipes and ducts. This hopper allows access to the polymer soup for the addition of pigment and lubricants. The molten plastic is extruded into long strands and cooled in a trough of water. This shaker separates any pellets that are too large. Thermoplastic travels from the manufacturer as pellets in bags, boxes, and tanker trucks. Plastic is usually extruded like pipe and rain gutters or injection molded. Your first experience with injection molding was probably in a model airplane kit. Nowadays, the molds are designed on a computer and created by hand and fancy computer-driven machinery. Molten plastic is forced into the mold at high pressure and out pops the part. Well, this is a nice montage, but depending on the size and design of the part, molding often takes a minute or so. The molder has to know the molecular characteristics of the plastic being used because the exact amount of pressure and the molding temperature will affect how the plastic flows and how much it shrinks while it cools. The molding pressure also has an effect on the final density of the part. Injection molding of modern plastics has gone a long way beyond the model airplane kit. Injection molded plastic parts are now the preferred precision parts in most machinery. Modern plastic parts are engineered from the molecule on up. For instance, your car grill will shatter easier than the bumper in front of it because the grill had to use a plastic that flowed through a more intricate mold. Acme thinks it's time to acknowledge plastic as a proud member of humanity's good things. After all, it's organic. Mm -hmm.